Hi everyone. In this video we're looking at how to use the table of contents element. This much requested element allows you to, you guessed it, add a table of contents to your website. This useful element generates a table of contents for the page or post it's on by analyzing the titles used on the page. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up with all the latest videos like this one. And if you don't want to miss one, click the bell icon to get notifications of all new videos on our channel. Ok, let's begin. The table of contents element can be added anywhere you think it useful, like on long blog posts or pages where there are a number of headings. What makes this element super versatile is that you can place it as a one-off, directly in a page or post content area, but perhaps more usefully you can also add it in an automated manner by adding it into a layout section. The three most common places to add a table of contents would be at the very top of the content, after some initial content, or in a sticky column to the left or right of the content. At the top of the content is an easy place to add it, and this can be done in the same way whether it is directly in the content or in a layout section. Adding it to a sticky column is also straightforward, and this best suits a layout section approach. Adding it further down the page is also easy if adding directly into the content, but in a layout it requires a bit more work, as this necessitates splitting the content. For this example, I have imported a long post from the ThemeFusion blog into the Psychology pre-built site, and I will demonstrate the various ways we could add this element. Let's start by adding the element to the very top of the content. I'm editing the actual post here, but whether you are adding it to the top of the post content, or to the top of a single post content layout section, the only difference would be that adding it like I am here in the actual post, means that it will only show on this one post, whereas if you add it to a layout section, and then apply that to a single post layout, it would display on all posts. I'll just add a title first, and call it Overview, and give it a H2. I'll also have to change the font colour to colour 1 here so we can see it. Ok, now I'll move it to the top. Now under that I can add my table of contents element. Ok, let's configure this. The element has three tabs, and we start on the general tab. The first option is accepted headings. This is where you select which headings tags to index. I will remove H4, and maybe H3 as well. Yeah, I think just the H2s give me the type of table of contents I'm looking for here. Depending on your page and title structure, you might choose differently of course. This is a flat table of contents, and if I add H3 back, you can see how it now lists the subheadings of the various sections as well. But to keep it simple, I will leave it at just H2s. Limit to parent is next, and as the description says, this controls what headings to show depending on the parent. All will show all titles on the generated post in the table of contents. If I limit it to just the post content element, the other layout section titles are removed. If I select layout slash page content, it adds back the titles found in the layout outside the content element, or I can also choose custom. If I do that, I get another option called Limit Heading Selection by CSS Selectors, and the description explains that I can use CSS Selectors to limit the headers. There are also a couple more selection options below this, called Ignore Headings by CSS Selector, and Ignore Headings by Words. These three options are a little bit advanced, but they are there to give you the options you need to create exactly the table of contents you are wanting. For my example, I just want to set the Limit to Parent option to Post Content Element, as that's what's pulling my blog content in the layout here, and I want to limit my table of contents to the actual post content. I might also just use the Ignore Headings by Words option, as I don't want the initial overview heading to be also in the table of contents. So if I just add the word Overview to this field, that title is then ignored in the table of contents. Ok, the next option here is Hide Hidden Titles. This allows you to select whether or not to hide titles that are not visible when the page loads. These could be titles inside of tabs or toggles, or even content boxes with timeline animation. By default these are hidden, and I will leave that on Yes. The next option is Highlight Current Heading and this will really only be useful if the element is positioned in a sticky column, but let's turn it on so we can see how it works later. Cache content for SEO is next, and this just makes sure your table of contents is indexable. As the description says, if the cache is used, the TOC content will be indexable by search engines because the post page will be served with the TOC element content already in place, rather than it being generated after page load. 
The TFC cache will be auto-updated after page load if the post page content has been changed. So let's leave that on. Then there are the usual element visibility and CSS class and CSS ID options, but we don't need those here. So now let's look at the design tab. At the top we have the usual margin and padding options, and I might just apply a 50 pixel bottom margin and 20 pixel left padding to indent this a bit. Then comes an item typography option set, and here I might make the table of contents stand out a bit from the body text by applying the lead global typography set to it. I'll just override the font to 18 pixels, and the line height here to 1.5, as I might well get titles going over two lines when I use this in a sticky column later on. Okay, counter type is next, and here if we want we can choose from a range of counters to display at the start of the TOC items. You can choose from a wide range of counter types, from a custom icon, to bullets, numeric or decimal, and many more. I might just go for numeric. Counter separator is the next option, and here we can add a separator between the counter and the item. You can choose from dot, comma, or custom. I think I'll stick with dot. This option is not available if you choose bullet or custom icon. List indent comes after this, and this controls the padding between different hierarchy items. As I have a flat list here, it won't show anything. But if I just pop back to the general tab and add H3s again, and now come back to the option, if I now change this to say 40 pixels from the default of 20, we can see the H3s are indented a further 20 pixels. So much control. I'll just step back in my history states to remove those additions. Text on single line is the next option, and if enabled, this will prevent item text from exceeding one line. If it is longer than one line, then three dots will show up at the end instead. This would be very useful if the element is placed in a sticky column and you don't want it wrapping. I think I will leave this on no. Okay, next comes an item styling option set, where we can set the normal and hover slash active colors for the items. With the normal state, we can set both the item and counter color, and for the hover state, we also get the addition of the item background color. As the description says, the item color defaults to the link color, which globally on this side is green, but I have overridden that in this container, which is why it's brown here. But in any case, I want the items to be white, so I will change the item color to be color 1. The counter color defaults to the item color, so I can leave that, and for the hover active state, I'll set the hover item color to color 1, and the hover item background color to color 5. For the highlight item styling, I'll just set color 10 as the background color on both states. We'll have a further look at this later when it's in the sticky column. Okay, the last three options here give us even more control over the items themselves, and here I want to make them a bit bigger. We can apply padding, border radius, and margin. Padding is added to any existing line height, and also increases the height of the background color, while item margin increases the distance between the items and doesn't change the background color. For this example, I will add a further five pixel padding to both the top and bottom of the items, and add a 5 pixel border radius all around. I'll leave the margins empty. Yeah, that's what I'm chasing. Okay, the final tab here is the Extras tab, and here of course you can animate the elements if you wish. Please see the How to Use the Element Animation Options video for more information on that. At this point, I might just save this title and TOC element into the library so we can easily use them again. I'll just click on the Save Element icon on the title, and give it a name, and save it. And I'll do the same for the TOC element. And now if we save this, and head to the post on the front end, then we can see the table of contents element at the very top, and we can of course just click to go to any section of the article. In this case, the table of contents is only on this post, but as I mentioned, if it were added in the same way to the top of a single post layout content layout section, then it would be at the top of all posts. Okay, all good. But now how would we add this element further down the page? When just adding it to one post like this, you can just add it wherever you want. But with a layout template, it's a bit trickier. This is because we have to split the content somehow. I'll just go to the layouts page and edit the content layout section for single posts. And here we can see that it's just displaying the content element. Let's say we wanted the table of contents after the initial paragraphs. 
So what we would need to do in this situation is to edit all our posts individually and cut the text of the first paragraphs and add them to the WordPress custom excerpt field. This is only found through the back end or basic editor. So let's go back to our post and open it in the back end builder in a new tab. Let's just head to screen options and make sure the excerpt field is enabled. It is, so now let's get the intro paragraphs we want to paste in there. I'll just edit this text block under introduction and on the text tab I'll select and copy the text. So now we can delete our first title and our TOC element as we will be adding them to the layout section and we can also delete the intro title and the text block. Now let's head to the bottom of the page. Here we can see the excerpt field above the page options. I will just paste in our first paragraphs here so they can be pulled separately. I'll just save this post, but as mentioned you would have to do this on all of your posts for this method to work. Once this is done we can come back to our layout section and add a few elements. Let's start with the text block element. And as content we will click on the dynamic data icon and choose excerpt slash archive description. In this instance this will pull from the excerpt field in our post content which is our first few paragraphs. I'll just go to the design tab and set the font color to white. Now I'll just move that element to the top of the layout section. We could add our introduction heading back in here, but I'll just skip that. And so now we can add the title and table of contents elements. I'll just add an element and go to the library elements and add the title element. And under that, I will add the table of contents element. Okay, now under that we already have the content element which will display the rest of the content. So let's save this layout section. And now let's come back to our post and view it on the front end. Now we have our text element pulling the excerpt at the top, followed by our title and table of contents element, and then the remainder of our post content. It's a bit of a job to set up, but if you want your table of contents under some initial content, that's the way to do it. Now finally, let's look at the sticky column method. This is probably my preferred placement, as it's easy to implement, the table of contents is always visible, and it acts as a great page navigation on long posts with multiple titles. I'll just restore that excerpt text back into the page content and delete the text block pulling that excerpt from the layout section. So now the layout section is as it was, only I have the overview title and the TOC element at the top of the layout. Instead, Let's move them both over into this right column. I'll place them both at the top of the column. I'll now edit the column and on the extras tab set position sticky to on. And I'll also add a 100 pixel sticky column offset to take the sticky header into account. So now let's save our layout section again. And come back and refresh our post. After it loads, we can see it's now using our updated layout section with the table of contents at the top of the right column. If I scroll down, we can see it becomes sticky, and our current heading is highlighted. And of course, we can navigate around the article by clicking on the links. How organized is that? Okay, so that's the table of contents element. No one will ever be lost again. Thanks for watching, and let us know in the comments how you have used this on your site. Okay, this concludes our video on how to use the table of contents element. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up with all the latest videos. And if you have any questions or need assistance, please create a support ticket and our team will gladly assist you. As always, we want to thank you for choosing Nevada.